Well, the time has come for us to get started. So welcome, everyone. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to tonight's webinar. We had uh, over 300 people that were registered, and I see that uh, a number of people are logging into the call right now. For those of you who have been on some of our past webinars, you're going to be very familiar with this format. Uh, we're going to speak for about 40 to 45 minutes or so, and then I'm going to leave some time for questions uh, at, at the end. All of you should see a little control panel on your screen, so as you think of the questions, just go ahead and type those in. Uh, we won't be able to get to the questions until we're done, but certainly we, we have left time to make sure that everyone gets their questions answered. Within uh, the next day or two, you'll all get a copy of this recorded webinar, so in case you can't stay towards the end, uh, which I really recommend that you do because there's going to be a special offer tonight, but if you can't stay towards the end or get distracted, don't worry, it is being recorded. For those of you who are interested in getting uh, the uh, PACE, AGD PACE CE, you'll be sent that information in, uh, as well. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Lauren Levine. Many of you know me as the digital dentist. And what I try to do and have been doing for the last number of years is to present information that I think is of value to dental practices even though I am a technology guy, that's basically what I do, um, I really found that a lot of procedures, a lot of things that we've thought in the past as being low tech is really becoming very high tech as well. And throughout my travels across uh, North America and Europe, uh, by going to all the major meetings, I get to see some very interesting things, meet some very interesting people, and my goal is to share that information with, with all of you tonight. So tonight we're going to be talking about crown removal. And I can certainly tell you as a former practicing periodontist, I would do a lot of crown lengthenings and very often the dentist would say to me, hey, you know, uh, if you're already going to have the patient anesthetized, why don't you just go ahead and remove the crown? And of course, me being the nice guy that I was, I would always agree to do it and I just hated it. It was not fun. I was always worried that uh, the roots were going to come out with that crown. Um, so, you know, as dentists, it's, it's likely that you're going to have to remove crowns and bridges for our patients. This is something that we all do on a regular basis. There are various ways to remove crowns and various crown removers that have been in the market for years, but at least in my experience, most of those systems are frustrating or expensive or they just don't really work as advertised. Um, they may not be very predictable, they take up a lot of time, and they just put a lot of wear and tear on our hand pieces or just, we go through so many burrs. Um, as we, most of you are aware, when you pull a crown, you know, a lot of your strength is absorbed or lost in the ligament of the tooth. So the system that we're going to talk about tonight is really completely different. We're not talking about pulling the crown off. We're actually pushing the crown off. Uh, this is a, a completely different paradigm shift. Uh, the product that we'll be talking about tonight has been around for quite some time in Europe. It's relatively new to the U.S. market. It's gotten some great clinical feedback and awards this year. Dental Advisor uh, gave the WAM key a four and a half star rating. It's a top WOW product for 2012. Um, and they did a study that determined it was 92% effective on 306 cases. So a really superior product and, and system. As much as I would be happy to tell you about it, I, I'd rather get the person who knows the system best uh, to tell us about it. So I'm very pleased uh, to introduce Alex Mueller tonight. He's the founder and CEO of WAM. He is, uh, this is the beauty of webinars. Is he stopped very late uh, joining us. He's actually uh, speaking to us from France tonight. Um, WAM is really well known for the, their unique and innovative products, uh, such as the WAM key, crown and bridge removable system. He's going to discuss the system, the benefits. We're going to offer a special at, at the end of his presentation, and then we're going to open up the floor to questions and answers. So it gives me great ple pleasure to welcome Alex. Alex, welcome from France. I'm going to turn the screen over to you, and we look forward to uh, hearing your presentation tonight. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, Lon. How are you? Uh, and welcome to everybody. Um, and thank you very much for your, your interest. Uh, um, well, do you, uh, can I start? Is it okay for everybody? Lauren? Absolutely. We can you okay, so let's go. So the first thing that we are going to do is just to present myself up and mo mostly uh, to explain you where I am presently uh, because the technology allows us to do amazing things. Actually, I'm presently in France uh, that you can see here. I'm, uh, um, I'm exactly in the south of France, very near Marseille in a city called Aix-en-Provence. Some of you have probably been there in the past. Uh, and if you haven't been there, I really recommend you to, to uh, visit this uh, area, which is really wonderful. 
Um, and uh, some of you have probably uh, uh, seen a picture which is very, very uh, popular around the world because it has been painted by uh, um, one of the most famous painters called Paul Cezanne. Um, you probably know his paintings because most of them are in USA, actually in New York. So here are some of his paintings. Um, and uh, now that you know where you spend probably your next holidays, uh, we'll talk about the way um, you'll remove your next crowns. So uh, let me tell you more or less uh, how we are going to uh, do this presentation. The first thing that we are going to talk about is uh, the, we are going to talk about the difficulties that you usually meet uh, when uh, removing crowns and we'll try to explain why you fail with the uh, uh, traditional uh, solutions. And after, uh, uh, we'll talk about the new solutions and especially about the one key, of course. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is to make sure that we talk about the same thing when we talk about crown removal because uh, most of the time when I talk about crown removals, people think that I'm talking about the crown that you want to reuse. But I'm, when I'm talking about crown removal, I'm talking about uh, all the crowns that are permanently uh, cemented that you want to remove, uh, even if you don't want to reuse them. So uh, when you uh, uh, cut a crown completely and destroy it, for me, it's the same as if you were removing a crown. And at, at the after, you will understand why um, I mean this. Uh, the first reason why you would usually remove a crown is, of course, when you want to redo uh, uh, the crown or the bridge. Uh, sometimes also you would like probably also to uh, modify this crown or this bridge. For example, when you have a bridge and want to add uh, one abutment. Uh, another uh, reason why you would have to remove a bridge is when you have a bridge, for example, that is loose on one side and not the other. And um, I know that this is going to be a bit uh, strange for some of you. Um, uh, I'm, I never do root canal treatments, or very seldom do root canal treatments through crowns. I remove most of my crowns when I have to do root canal treatments or retreatments. And I'll explain you at the end why I work this way. And uh, let's talk about now about the goals and uh, when, I, uh, when you remove crowns. Of course, the first goal is uh, to preserve the tooth. And I know that most American dentists um, uh, prefer uh, to uh, um, cut the crowns rather than trying to pull them uh, because then they are sure that they won't break anything. And I think this is uh, the most important thing. Uh, the second goal could be, of course, to reuse uh, or to, to be able to reuse this crown or this bridge, uh, usually has a uh, provisional, but sometimes also has a permanent. Uh, another goal could be also, of course, to preserve your patient. What I mean is that not to traumatize. I hope my words are cor uh, correct because sometimes I know that my English is not really perfect, so sorry about that. Um, and of course, there are some financial aspects when you remove a crown or a bridge. Uh, the first goal is, of course, to avoid time wasting. Uh, as you said long before, uh, uh, when you start to uh, uh, drill these uh, crowns, and especially uh, um, these non-precious metals or these new materials such as uh, uh, full porcelain, you can uh, um, waste a lot of burrs and uh, use probably also ruin your hand pieces. And um, uh, we are now going to uh, talk about um, um, the difficulties, uh, why you meet so uh, um, many difficulties for uh, removing crowns and uh, uh, with the traditional uh, uh, solutions. Uh, but uh, let's say in the general uh, uh, aspect, the thing is that the more retention of friction, I hope the words are correct, uh, the more retention you have, uh, the more difficult it will be. So uh, this friction will depend mostly on the angulation. I would say the more vertical uh, your abutments will be, of course, the more difficult it will be. And also, the higher uh, the, build, uh, the preparations uh, will be, uh, the harder it, it will be for you. 
uh, another thing is that some dentists, very seldom, but some dentists uh, add some kind of artifices in their preps uh, to uh, to uh, make them, um, uh, let's say, uh, more tightly adjusted. And this can also increase the di your difficulty uh, for uh, removing crowns. Uh, this uh, aspect, the cement, is something that I want to talk about because a lot of you are uh, anxious and they think that uh, uh, the difficulty for removing crowns depends mostly on the cement, which is not completely true. Uh, I know, of course, that uh, um, uh, bonding system, resin cements, are uh, much stronger than uh, uh, these um, uh, um, uh, zinc phosphate uh, 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 cements. Uh, two to three times uh, stronger, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible to remove these crowns or these bridges, and the proof is uh, uh, that uh, sometimes you know that uh, you have some patients coming with a crown or a bridge that gets loose on one side while it was cemented with a resin cement. So uh, uh, I'll explain you at the end, you'll discover that uh, if you uh, use the right system, you have a big chance to remove these uh, uh, crowns and bridges even when they have been cemented with the resin cements. Uh, another difficulty, especially when you use uh, these uh, pulling systems, and we will see that later, is that especially on the mandibula, uh, uh, if the, the tooth or the mandibula is not stable, then it's very hard because you lose most of your energy in the mandibula, in the ligaments. So let's talk now about these pulling uh, crown removers, um, uh, so you've probably experienced them uh, in the past, some of you still try sometimes to use them. Uh, whatever they look like for me, uh, they are all the same and they have all the same dis uh, disadvantage. Uh, actually, the main problem is that uh, you try to grab something on the crown or on the bridge and then you try to pull and the thing is that most of your energy is lost here in the ligament. And this explains uh, two things. The first thing is that you lose a lot of energy and this explains that your patient suffer, of course, uh, because uh, the ligament was not uh, created to be pulled on but to be pushed on. Uh, a second thing is that it explains that you have a poor efficiency, um, of course, uh, as you lose uh, uh, your power, you have unpredictable results. Uh, the second thing is that when you use these pulling systems, uh, you always have to remember that you are not Superman and what I mean by this is that you can't see anything uh, through your crowns. Uh, you can't see what is the shape of your preps and as you can't see what is the shape of the prep, it is impossible to work uh, along the axis of your crown and this is the kind of uh, movement you always induce. Uh, you always induce a rocking movement which explains that you have a chance to break the, the, the prep. And this is the reason why I strongly recommend not to use these kind of instruments. So uh, when you do these rocking movements, you in increase the, the frictions between the prep and the crown. Uh, you increase the risk of fracture. And also uh, another problem when you pull on, on your crowns, especially when you have buildups under, uh, uh, under the, your crowns, uh, is that you never know what is going to happen. If you are lucky, um, this is what is going to happen. Uh, but if you are not lucky, uh, this is what may happen. So you could remove the crown and the restoration, or even worse, you could uh, break the, the root uh, because the root, the root is weakened by this uh, uh, post here. And uh, all, always uh, when you use these crown pullers, you have to remember that uh, the weakest link will always break. This is the main uh, problem. Uh, and it is the same when you, you use these, uh, I don't know, I think you call that the rich wheel crown remover. 
uh, it's exactly the same, especially if you have a, a, an antagonist uh, a crown. Um, so let's suppose that you want to remove the, the lower crown here. Uh, if you are lucky, this is what will happen, but if you're not, this is my, uh, what might happen too. So honestly, um, I, I would uh, strongly recommend to avoid these uh, pooling systems, except maybe uh, when uh, you have to, when you are dealing with um, uh, non-cemented non uh, crown, so when you try a new crown, or when you uh, want to remove temporarily uh, cemented crowns. And uh, I um, would just give you a little trick, some of you probably uh, know it. Uh, when you uh, make new crowns, I strongly recommend to add these little uh, undercuts uh, uh, on the lingual side of your crowns, which um, uh, ease uh, the, their removal when you try the, the crown. It's something that I strongly, strongly recommend. It can be very, very helpful. Now, uh, um, because of all what we've talked about before, uh, you, you understand that I don't like the crown pullers and I know that most of you don't like them and this is why probably you decide to uh, cut your crowns in most cases. Uh, so of course you, uh, this is 100% uh, efficient, but uh, in uh, so you've got various um, uh, instruments to do that. Um, uh, but of course, when you use this technique, uh, even if you're uh, pain-free, even if you don't pay, take any chance to break anything underneath, you waste a lot of time. You waste your burrs, and of course, at the end, you can't use these crowns anymore. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, the most recent and uh, most uh, efficient uh, solutions. Let's say the yes, uh, uh, I think that the only one that I've heard about uh, around the world, and I've, honestly, I've seen a lot of things around the world for removing crowns. I think uh, the only one that is uh, quite efficient, let's say, is the metal leaf, but uh, it has some weaknesses, uh, uh, though. Um, uh, so I won't um, show it in detail, but very uh, briefly. Uh, if you heard about it, you know that the, the, the goal when you use metal lift is to create a little slot on the occlusal side of the crown. Uh, uh, this slot has to be very precise, so you have to use very uh, special burrs. Uh, uh, and then uh, you insert a kind of sc uh, a screw uh, into uh, this slot and create a thread into uh, the framework of, uh, of your crown. And when you screw, uh, the screw is going to bump on the occlusal side of your prep, which is going to lift uh, the crown up. And this system, I mean, the concept is good. Uh, it can be quite efficient, but the thing is that it's uh, quite expensive. Uh, it requires very special burrs and to be very accurate. Um, it's hard to use on non-precious uh, alloys uh, uh, or be because uh, it's going, in most cases, to destroy or damage the screw. Uh, when you use it on uh, golden frameworks, if they are too thin, it's very hard to create a, a, an efficient thread, and so uh, you might fail. And um, and has uh, you understand it when you read the name of this system? Uh, it's called metal lift, which means that if you if you don't have any metal framework, it's absolutely impossible to use it. Uh, last uh, disadvantage uh, of this system: uh, it can work in uh, one. Uh, I mean, uh, it can work only if you have. Uh, uh, um, a hard understructure. If you don't have any uh, hard and, uh, understructure, uh, let's say that you have, for example, an empty uh, abutment, uh, an implant, uh, an abutment on implant, or if you have a lot of decay, for example, you won't be able to uh, use a metalist. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, the one key, which is uh, the main subject uh, of uh, our presentation. And the first thing that we are going to talk about is the process. And uh, uh, um, the process is quite easy. We have a few steps to follow. And the first step uh, that can be sometimes a bit hard, but you, actually it's not that hard, is to think. And actually, you have to guess where uh, the cement 
between the occlusal side of your preparation and the inner side of the crown should be. So, of course, you don't know where it is because, as we said before, we are not Superman and we can't see through the crown, but we can most uh, more or less imagine where it should be. Actually, if we're dealing with a metal crown, it should be close to the occlusal side, uh, uh, um, close to the occlusal side of your uh, crown. So let's say a millimeter uh, under the occlusal side, but if you're dealing with other kind of crowns, such as uh, uh, porcelain or um, porcelain fused to metal crowns, then it should be much lower because you've got a double structure. And uh, once you've done this little guess, uh, uh, all what you have to do now is to start by uh, drilling. Uh, but you don't drill too far. Uh, all what I want you to do is to uh, create, um, let's say, a little window into the crown. Um, uh, because what we want to do, of course, is to make sure that we are at the right level. And as we are not sure, uh, uh, so as I said, we, were, we are looking for the cement layer. But as we are not sure, we are going to look, uh, which is much easier, we are going to look for the junction between the prep and the crown. And usually it's much easier because what we are going to look for is the junction between dentin and metal or dentin and porcelain. It's, it's quite easy actually in most cases. And uh, so in order to make sure that we are at the right level, we are just going to enlarge this window slightly this way. And once we are sure that we are at the right level, then we can start drilling further and um, create a little uh, tunnel uh, between the prep and the crown, and uh, what we have to do is to reach uh, uh, the, the middle of this prep to, in order to be as close as possible to the vertical axis of uh, uh, the prep. Um, and you'll understand very quickly why I want to be uh, very close to the prep. Uh, the last uh, step uh, is to um, um, how can I say, just to enlarge this window uh, horizontally uh, in order to have this uh, horizontal shape. Uh, because the instrument that we are going to introduce now into this slot is horizontal. So this is what it looks like, actually. You've got three instruments. Uh, we can talk later about why three instruments if you want. Uh, but what I want you to uh, watch carefully is the shape uh, uh, of uh, these instruments, so it's oval, uh, and this oval, ins when you insert it uh, into the slot, uh, is going to lift the crown up. Uh, so we, we'll, as I said, we introduce the instrument uh, down to the bottom of our tunnel, and then we make a slight rotation uh, this way uh, in order to lift the crown up. And of course, I'm pretty sure that some of you think that uh, this um, uh, movement requires a lot of strength. Uh, and this is what uh, most people think, but actually we don't need strength. And uh, I strongly recommend to be very careful when you do this movement, because actually all what you need is uh, your fingertips. Usually two, three, four fingers are far enough. And so you don't need your plain hand to, to, to uh, uh, succeed in removing your crown with this system. It's very surprising. Uh, the, uh, a very important thing uh, um, beside this is that you should always avoid to induce these kind of rocking movements, because if you do this movement, it's the same as if you were using a crown remover, a traditional crown remover, a crown puller, if you prefer. Um, so you should never do this movement because uh, if you do that, you will break the instruments or you will break the porcelain or uh, even worse, you could break the tooth. It, won't, it wouldn't be good. What I want you to do is just to twist the instrument. So I'm pretty sure that after this uh, little uh, presentation, you have a lot of questions. You would probably uh, wonder if it really works. Uh, 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 um, or how often does uh, it works. Um, has Lauren said it works uh, very frequently, but we'll understand very quickly why. Uh, you could 
think that the instrument is not strong enough. Uh, uh, you would wonder probably uh, if you're, you might fracture the tooth. And we'll answer all those questions uh, uh, um, uh, very quickly because I'm going to explain you why this system works. Actually, uh, the first thing that I want you to understand is that there is nothing about magic behind this system. Uh, it's only about mechanics. Uh, and uh, remember what we said before. I told you uh, that um, when you were using uh, these uh, crown pullers, you were wasting a lot of energy into the ligament. And I explained to you also that uh, um, you didn't work. Um, um, uh, you were not working, I mean, along the axis, and you, you were uh, actually working by a rock, with a rocking movement. When you use the, the one key, uh, instead of uh, uh, wasting your uh, energy into the ligament, you work, let's say, between uh, the two things you want to separate. And the, thing is, the first thing is that you are actually going to push on the tooth, as we were saying, which explains that there is absolutely no pain for your patient. It's the same for your patient, the same feeling as if uh, the patient was chewing. And usually the, the feeling that the patient has is that he's uh, biting a, a kind of a hard toffee. Uh, the second thing is that there is no risk to remove the buildup if you have a buildup under uh, the crown uh, because, of course, you are pushing on it. And um, because you are between the two things you want to separate, you don't waste any energy, so you will need less energy than if you were pulling. That's, it's very easy to understand uh, such a thing. Um, and um, another point is that we are now very close to the center uh, of uh, our prep or uh, of our crown. Uh, this is why I told you before that you have to drill down to the middle. Um, and as we are very close to the middle, uh, the crown is now uh, free to go where it wants to go when we push it by its center. And as it is free, it's always going to look for the easiest way, the way of least resistance. And this explains that we need less energy than if you were pulling, of course. And for that reason also, we have no risk to uh, fracture the tooth, and we have a much higher efficiency. So uh, I hope that I'm clear, um, and uh, we'll see that at the end. Um, now let's talk about the advantages of the WAM key. The first. Uh, thing that will uh, very surprising when you will use it for the first time is that it's very, uh, very, very easy to use. Uh, uh, so easy that um, usually you will see, uh, uh, you won't feel any resistance uh, in your uh, in your finger, and you will see the you you probably understood that the process was quite easy. It's totally pain free for your patient. Uh, and I would say even for you, because uh, sometimes I, I know that some dentists uh, are anxious when they know that they will have to remove crowns. So there is absolutely no stress, no discomfort for your patient. Uh, in most cases, you won't need any anesthetics. Uh, so uh, I would say sometimes uh, my father says uh, he has some patients arriving with a, a, uh, uh, on emergency uh, with a big abscess or something, and he, in most cases, rather than uh, uh, well giving uh, antibiotics or whatever, or even uh, instead of uh, putting anesthetics, he would prefer just to remove the quiet, the, the crown. Uh, usually, uh, it's going to take him something like uh, 40 to uh, 50 seconds, and and the patient uh, the the uh, the. the and the pain to the, the, of, of the patient is immediately uh, decreasing. So honestly, uh, uh, don't waste any time to use anesthetics. Uh, even on vital teeth, in a lot of cases, you won't need anesthetics. Um, uh, another thing is that it's very, very safe, which is uh, the, probably the most important thing uh, to me. Uh, so no risk to break the tooth. If you were, if you have a buildup under the tooth, uh, you don't have any chance to uh, remove the buildup. And if you have a, a, um, an implant uh, under uh, the tooth, uh, under sorry, under the crown, uh, same thing. You you don't uh, induce any uh, uh, stress on, on this implant. So it's very very safe. 
Uh, now, as I said before, it's very quick. I would say um, usually for metal crumbs, you will spend less than a minute uh, after, let's say, uh, five between five and ten crown removals it's 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 becoming really a, a routine it's very 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 quick uh, another advantage of the, uh, sorry uh, we, I was talking about the metal crowns and if you're dealing with a, um, um, a porcelain uh, porcelain fused to metal it's, it might be a bit longer if you don't want to break the porcelain um, so let's say between two and four minutes per crown so uh, if you have a bridge, let's suppose you have uh, three uh, abutments, uh, so you have to spend three times two to four minutes uh, for removing it. It's very, very quick. Um, another uh, thing is that, as I said, it's very predictable. We, uh, I think Lauren talked about uh, this evaluation that was done by uh, a dental advisor. They said that it worked for them in 92% of the cases, I think uh, it's the same results that we have here in Europe. Uh, usually, uh, users say that uh, the users say that it works in 90 to 95 percent of the cases, which is, I think, a very, very good rate compared to other solutions. Uh, um, as I don't want to uh, lie, I, I will quickly uh, give you the limits of this concept. Uh, actually, there are not so many. Uh, there is one big limit, which is the lower anteriors. Uh, so don't use it on the lower anteriors because uh, they are too small. You won't be able to introduce the instrument. Uh, for the upper ones, uh, you could use it, uh, but it's not the best indications. Uh, the best indication. The best indications are uh, molars and premolars. And as I said, uh, in all those cases, uh, you have a more than 90% chances to succeed. And when I say 90 to 95% chances, it means whatever the cement is, whatever the kind of crown is. So uh, uh, we were talking about the cement before. We were talking about this resin cement. Uh, when, when I said that you have a 90% uh, 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 success rate, it, this includes uh, crowns that were bonded and not crowns that were only cemented. Uh, and uh, if you are dealing with a porcelain, full porcelain crowns, of course uh, there is a little learning curve. When you receive the instruments, we give you some tricks on the instructions for use. And I would say that uh, you've got something like 70% uh, chances, 75% chances to save the porcelain. So it's still better than zero because usually if you cut your crowns, you've got a hundred percent chances to destroy them. Here you've got uh, 70 or 75 percent chances to save them. So uh, I think uh, it's really worth trying. And uh, of course the, the advantage that uh, I, I was uh, talking about before is that you will be able to reuse your crowns and bridges. So we'll see after why it is so interesting sometimes to reuse those crowns and bridges. Um, and of course, um, uh, um, this is the last advantage that I see. Um, uh, there is a final uh, financial advantage because you save your time, you save your burrs, and you save your, your crown and bridges have for uh, permanent reuse or for, uh, for um, provisional reuse. Now, let's see actually why you could reuse uh, your crowns and bridges. I'm going to uh, just to talk about uh, uh, clinical cases. So usually I'm, I'm, I'm showing videos when I lecture uh, and it's the first time I'm lecturing uh, uh, this way. So the thing is I have to extract uh, pictures from the videos so the quality is sometimes not very good but uh, they, they explain quite well what I want to, uh, to explain. Uh, what I want to show, sorry. Um, so this case was published by a friend, a friend of mine. Uh, it's a patient that he meets for the first time. Uh, you see that we have a complete bridge here to remove and we have also after to uh, make a temporary and usually uh, my friend said that uh, if he had to do that uh, with the traditional way, that means if he was cutting everything, uh, this is non-precious metal, 
uh, he would probably uh, uh, schedule an hour uh, and a half appointment or probably two hours to make sure that uh, everything would be okay because sometimes you have surprises under the bridge. And this is what he did actually. Um, he just made the, the windows as usual in, uh, on each uh, crown. Um, and this is what he had um, once the bridge was removed. Uh, as you can see, uh, two abutments were completely decayed. So all what he had to do, so that was the bridge once it was removed. Uh, all what he had to do was to reline uh, these uh, two abutments and then to cement uh, the, complete the complete bridge back as a provisional. And all in all, the, uh, uh, the, the complete procedure took him uh, less than 30 minutes. So you see that there is a great interest in reusing uh, uh, this bridge here. I would say probably that uh, just in one appointment he got all his money back. Um, and, uh, let's see now um, another uh, another case uh, that was uh, also that was uh, by my father a um, few years ago. Uh, so that was a very little bridge. Uh, the posterior uh, crown was loose, but not the anterior one. So he made a window on uh, the anterior uh, crown uh, until the key twisted. Uh, uh, well, you see this little uh, silicon uh, piece. Uh, it's um, how do you call that a rubber uh, stop, I think, for endo. Uh, we place this rubber stop there just to measure the depth um, of the the slot to make sure that we reach the center uh, uh, of the of the crown. So um, he um, um, removed uh, the bridge, so that took less than a minute. I think that was 40 or 45 seconds. That's very, very quick, uh, very quick on metal crowns. And once he uh, checked uh, what was happening, he just had to uh, cement the bridge back as a temporary. Uh, has a temporary because unfortunately, uh, as, I, as far as I remember, uh, the posterior crown didn't fit anymore. But he had a perfect temporary uh, bridge. Uh, here is another case. So, um, as you can see on the X-ray, uh, we have a fracture uh, on uh, uh, one root. So, uh, we are just going to remove this bridge uh, in order to extract. So, we could have, of course, done surgery, but. I think uh, the, uh, uh, my father preferred to uh, remove the bridge for, for uh, uh, certain reasons that I, I don't remember. But anyway, as you can see, we made the window. Uh, you see that here we are on porcelain, and we made the window um, uh, uh, far from the occlusal side. Remember what I said, uh, but it's very obvious. Uh, when you have a porcelain, you have double structure, so you have to be far, uh, more far from the, the occlusal side. And uh, that's uh, what he made. So you, so he had to do uh, the two windows on each uh, uh, end of the, the bridge, and remove the bridge, made his extraction, and finally cemented the bridge back uh, as a provisional. I think in that case. Um, um, another case that was sent to me uh, by a German dentist a few uh, years ago, two or three years ago. Um, and I show you this case because I want to show you that sometimes if you don't use this uh, rubber stop, you could make a mistake, uh, but it could still work anyway. You can see here that the, the dentist uh, uh, made a window that was very, very, very short. And, but anyway, he succeeded, as he said, and he was able to reuse uh, his bridge. Uh, as he said, I think uh, the bridge was loose on one side and not the other, which explains why he had to remove it. But again, uh, I strongly recommend to measure the depth and to make sure that you uh, make the window down to the middle. That's very, uh, it gives you a, a more uh, actual movement and it's uh, far more efficient than any uh, uh, other, uh, than the, when you work uh, on the side of the crown. And uh, I wanted to uh, point out one little thing. If you read the, the comment of this dentist, on the right side, he explains that the col a colleague of his had tried to uh, pull this cr uh, crown for 15 minutes with a pulling system, you know, the Corona Flex uh, from Cable, I think. Uh, so uh, it shows you that uh, Wemke can do things that 
other systems are not able to do uh, for a very easy reason. We work at the right place uh, in the right direction. That's uh, the only reason why uh, the one key is so efficient. Now, uh, let's talk about the permanent reuse. Uh, and the, the question is, why would you reuse a crown permanently? And uh, I want to be a very, uh, um, how do you say, um, uh, firm on this. Uh, I mean, the, the only reason, very clear, what I said, the, the only reason why you could reuse a crown permanently is when the crown still fulfills all its functions. That's very important. Uh, what I mean by this is when it's uh, fulfilled, when you have the contact points, the occlusal side, uh, when uh, the cervical uh, area is still good, it still fits the crown, so no chances of leakage. And So uh, if your crown still fulfills all its functions, you can reuse it permanently. And uh, the main reason why I would reuse crowns or bridges permanently is when I do root canal treatments and I'll explain you why, or when I have a bridge that gets loose on one side and not the other side, sometimes it's only a question of bad luck and there is still, a, uh, we can still try and to re-cement this bridge and see what is going to happen, we, we never know. So let's talk about this um, uh, case here, which is uh, interesting. Uh, we've got a very, very poor prognosis for this tooth, and for that reason, we um, uh, we are going to try to to treat this patient, but we don't want to make a new crown because the prognosis is very poor, and we don't want either to. Uh, um, um, how can I say? We don't want to make a temporary because after the treatment, we want to leave this tooth. Uh, as long as possible before doing something new. So uh, again, we did the window. Uh, here my father made a red line to say where he thought that the metal structure was, and he made uh, this green button to show you where he, start, he had to drill. Uh, actually, he made a window that was a bit too large, but it doesn't matter because uh, until he, I mean, as far as he doesn't touch the cervical area, we don't mind, we will be able to fix this crown very easily. And this is what he did after uh, the treatment. He uh, fixed uh, the crown. There it is. And then he cemented the crown back permanently and not only as a provisional. Uh, that was, uh, as I said, in 2002. And I can tell you that the crown is still there. So I think that was a very good deal uh, for the dentist and for the patient. I hope you understand that. And, and, and I want to uh, talk um, about uh, this case uh, a bit more because I think that is, it is something probably that has changed a lot in Europe, in the countries where, uh, peop uh, where endodontists mostly uh, use the, these instruments. Uh, because usually when you do root canal treatments uh, in USA, you go through the crown. And when you go through the crown, you have to destroy everything here. Uh, and of course, if, uh, when you go through the crown, you have a, uh, I mean, the access is uh, much harder than when you, uh, when the crown is not on, on the, um, uh, on the, um, on the tooth anymore, on the prep. And also, once the uh, the treatment is finished, you have to uh, um, repair the occlusion, so you have to make it again, of course, and you have more chances to have some leakage uh, um, here around your uh, uh, around your composite uh, than uh, because it's on the occlusal side, so you have more chances to have some leakage than if you were doing it on the buccal or on the lingual side of the crown, as we do it with the, the one key. Uh, that's the first thing, but also um, the, I want to talk about the reason why we have to do this root canal treatment because uh, you know, all of you know that uh, usually uh, or in a lot of cases when you do a root canal treatment, well, it's because you had some uh, problem with the crown and you had probably some leakage uh, on the cervical area of the crown. And the thing is that if you don't remove that crown, you can't see what's, hap what's happening here on the cervical area of this crown. So uh, maybe you have some leakage, maybe you even have some decay at this place. So you are going to uh, fix uh, this occlusal side of your crown, but maybe you, you reuse that crown as a permanent, 
uh, and will have so you will meet some new problems very quickly because uh, you had some leakage on the cervical area. So I uh, I think it's easier uh, and far more efficient for you to remove. Uh, this crown, do your root canal, and then cement uh, the crown. I mean, once you uh, you know what's happening under the crown, then you decide if you reuse it as a provisional or if you reuse it permanently. So um, before uh, we stop, I think uh, I, I, uh, the presentation uh, um, uh, uh, you gives you most of the idea of the concept. Uh, I want to um, uh, talk ab ab about a little thing because uh, uh, Kurt, who is going to talk to you uh, after about his offer about the products, uh, um, he will talk to you about the, um, um, some tweezers, which is uh, something that we have developed here in, uh, in, um, in Europe. Um, actually, um, uh, we, we because we have uh, other uh, very good tricks for dentists uh, here in France and in Europe. Um, you, most of you use these kind of tweezers, regular tweezers. Uh, tw I call that straight tweezers. Um, and when you use these tweezers, you have to keep your fingers on the tweezers all the time until you are ready to drop or place uh, the objects that, that, that you are holding. Uh, so you have to keep the pressure all the time, and if you don't want to keep the pressure all the time, you have to use these uh, uh, self-locking tweezers, but I know that uh, most of you don't like them uh, for a simple reason, um, because the problem is that the, the locking system is getting usually too hard or too soft very quickly, and finally you, you leave them in the drawers. So we have designed something which is uh, um, that can be uh, bit more efficient. Actually, we just use these uh, self-locking tweezers, but cross tweezers. And the advantage of those tweezers is that as they are self-locking, uh, when you want to open, when you want to release the object, all what you have to do is to press on the handle, so you, it doesn't require any special efforts. And uh, when you handle uh, the object, the, the tweezers remain passively locked. And this can be very, very helpful in some procedures such as uh, placing posts, for example, or in Ando when you want to uh, hold the paper points or um, uh, uh, pita percha uh, cones. Uh, actually, um, um, uh, I, I honestly, uh, um, it's something that I strongly recommend to try because a lot of people who start using these tweezers uh, quickly realize that they are uh, very efficient and they use them, uh, I'm not, I wouldn't say for all their patients, but probably with, with uh, half of their patients so in a lot of uh, procedures. So there are two versions of uh, these tweezers. Uh, one which with these uh, serrated tips, as you can see on the on the picture here, and there is another one for endo with the uh, grooves. I don't have the picture here, but you can imagine what it is. So you've got grooves. Uh, you've got a longitudinal a longitudinal groove uh, and uh, two transversal grooves for holding paper points and um, gutta percha. So uh, there we are. Uh, I thank you very much for your attention and your interest. And I think that uh, I'm gonna um, um, uh, let uh, Lauren uh, uh, talk. Maybe if you're still there, if you don't sleep. <laughs> oh well, what time is it where you are? About two in the morning? Oh uh, uh, no, we are close to three now. Oh okay, right. It's three so. in the morning. <laughs> well, we appreciate you uh, you being on here, and uh, that was that was fantastic. I was uh, really it's just a thank you a paradigm shift in anything that I, that I learned in dental school, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that people see the value of this system. Um, I, I hope you you can stay around for a little bit and answer some questions. Of course. Uh, be, before we do that, uh, you know, I've always felt that for people to come onto a webinar, it, your time is valuable. I appreciate it. I know the the companies. Who are talking about their products and, and the, the concepts that we're presenting tonight appreciate it as well. And I've always asked them if they could provide some type of special. So I'm going to turn things over for a few minutes to Kurt Lawler. And any of you who have been on previous webinars are probably very familiar with the physics forceps and you've heard uh, Kurt uh, speak before. 
fantastic system, uh, the forceps system. I think the WAN key is just an extension of the types of systems that they have. So I'm going to turn the screen over to, uh, to Kurt to uh, present um, a special for tonight, and then we'll get to the, the questions and answers. So uh, the screen is yours, Kurt. Okay, Lauren, I appreciate it. Uh, Alex, a great presentation, and I uh, really enjoyed it, and I hope uh, everybody else on the line also found it to be uh, quite informative. All right, so I'll just go through this quickly so we can get to the um, question and answer session of the webinar this evening. Uh, Golden Dental Solutions is the uh, U.S. distributor of the WAM products. And uh, as an attendee of the webinar this evening, uh, we would like to offer you um, a special discount on the WAM key system or any of the other WAM products, uh, which you'll find on our website. Um, this evening, we're offering a 10% discount uh, by using the promotional code WAM. Uh, it's just W-A-M. And if you could use all caps, uh, if you're going to order online, um, it would be appreciated. I think the code uh, requires you to do that. Uh, we're going to have this special this available for um, the next 24 hours, so it expires tomorrow, November 8th, at midnight Eastern time. Um, on the WAM key system, I want uh, everybody out there um, to be aware that we do have a 30-day uh, money-back guarantee on the system, so I uh, encourage everybody to, to at least give it a try, and if, it, if it's not for you and you have any concerns with it, obviously just give us a call here, and we're more than, more than happy to give you a, uh, a full refund. Um, that's the policy here at our company uh, with any of our products as, as well as the uh, physics forceps. Um, to order the, the WAM or to learn more about the WAM products, um, if you go to our website at goldendentalsolutions.com, you'll see a lot of it is associated to the uh, physics forceps. However, if you look for the uh, WAM logo and the WAM icon, if you click that, it'll take you into a different section of our website, and you can learn a little bit more about the WAM key, the WAM tweezers that Alex mentioned, and some other really uh, unique and innovative products that are offered by WAM. Uh, there's clinical videos to watch that uh, we weren't able to do uh, this evening on, on the webinar just due to the um, technology aspect of uh, not having a uh, fast enough internet connection. And then the other way to order, obviously, is to give us a call here in our office at 877-987-2284, and we'd be more than happy to help you out here. So uh, once again, I'll just leave this up here on the screen and turn it back over to uh, Lauren to go through some of the questions that uh, have been asked by the participants tonight and have Alex um, go through the answer. So again, I, I thank everybody, and um, I'll turn it over to the Q&A session. Kurt, if they want to find out the actual pricing, they should just go to the website to get that? Yeah, I, can, I mean, the WAMP key system, it's, uh, it, it's normally $298, so it's not a um, terribly expensive uh, system, and with the discount, it comes to around, I think, $265, uh, so it's a, it's a fair price, and, and again, uh, there's the 30-day policy on it. So the pricing for the WAM key that Alex went through uh, with the webinar special would be, um, I think it comes to like $268. And that's for all three of the, the keys, Yeah, correct? Yeah, you get three keys, um, you get a few burrs to start with, and then a really good instructional DVD. Uh, that goes through the concept in more detail and gives all kinds of clinical tips on how to use it. So like Alex mentioned, there's not a lot of re reusable products. Um, it's the stainless steel instruments that can be used many, many times and just autoclaved. And then um, it comes with some some good good burrs to get started with. And uh, that's really the only um, item that you would need to repurchase. Okay. Great. Well, we do have some questions coming in, so uh, Kurt, uh, hopefully you can stay on the line, and uh, Alex, uh, can we uh, get you to answer a few questions as well? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, tell me, so what what questions do you want me to answer? So let's let's go. So um, when you drill the access hole, isn't there a high risk of porcelain fracture in porcelain fused to metal crowns? Um, there is a risk, of course, and that's, uh, that's why I said that you don't have a 100% uh, success uh, rate. Uh, when I say not a 100% uh, success rate, it means in terms of saving the porcelain. Uh, what we recommend usually is to use diamond burrs, only diamond burrs, to go through the porcelain 
and through the metal. So don't change the burr when you go through the metal. Keep working with diamond burrs. Uh, we use uh, usually, I think you say fine grain. Is that correct? Yep. Okay, a fine grain uh, burr. Uh, so you have, uh, it's, so it's not rough. That, that's what I mean. And if you uh, if you drill cautiously with a lot of water, honestly, uh, uh, you have a big chance to preserve uh, the porcelain. Now, another thing is that uh, the burrs that we provide in the kit are tungsten carbide burrs, but they are quite interesting uh, for people who use uh, uh, high-speed electric hand pieces. So uh, I know that in USA, most dentists work with air turbines. Uh, so for people who use, it, or who use air turbines, I recommend to use diamond burrs, but for, for those who have the chance to use these uh, uh, high-speed electric handpiece, then uh, the burrs that are in the kit will allow you to cut the porcelain and the metal uh, uh, like a piece of butter. Uh, uh, and, and you have a very, very high ch uh, big chance to preserve the, the porcelain with, this, with these burrs. But again, you have to use a high-speed electric handpiece. We use we we call that uh, red uh, contra-angles. I, I I hope that uh, people understand what I'm talking about. Okay, and and Kurt, you had mentioned that when they get the um, the kit, it comes with some of the burrs that uh, that you guys are recommending, correct? Actually, yes. Yeah, it comes okay. with. Uh, there, there, there's three of those burrs. There's three burrs in the kit, and. Um, and then Wham does sell the the refills if you want to uh, repurchase those burrs, or um, you know, or, or maybe that maybe you have an alternative that's something similar. Okay, uh, I'm going to read a comment here. It's not actually a question, but um, it, I think it relates to what we were talking about. Uh, because during at the beginning of the presentation, I had talked about the fact that Dental Advisor had given us such a high rating. And one of the attendees tonight, uh, who I've known for quite some time, Dr. Frank Berman, um, he is a clinical consultant for Dental Advisor, and he reviewed the WAM key. And I'm just going to quote what he said. He says, I was quite skeptical, but after trying and evaluating the product, I found it to be as good as and even better than advertised. Every time I use it, my assistant and I break out laughing at how marvelously it, it works. This is a wonderful product. I ended up purchasing it and use it all the time, over 90% success rate in my office. So I think that's a, a glowing recommendation uh, from the person who actually evaluated it. <laughs> Thank you. There is no better way to, to, to comment, uh, to, I mean, to, to describe the, the, the product. I think it, it's okay. really worth trying, of course. So when they're using the key, Alex, do they turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, or does that not make a difference? <laughs> Actually, in the past, um, there was only one instrument that had to turn in a certain way, but now has, they are all symmetric, uh, equal. You, I, I hope that I am, is it okay when I say symmetric? You understand what I mean? Equal? Symmetrical? That means that means, symmetrical. Okay, sy symmetrical. Yeah. Uh, then you can turn in any direction. It's okay. But the, the important thing is that you have to turn and not to induce any rocking movement. That's very, very important. I explained that in the, uh, during the presentation. If you, have, if you are not sure, don't worry, because when you receive the instruments, there is a CD-ROM. And on, on the CD-ROM, uh, you will find some animations, uh, movies. And, uh, I mean, you, you, uh, uh, we explain you exactly how to uh, handle the instruments. So there is no, no chance to make any mistake. Okay, and Kurt, is that how most people get the training, that the CD is going to give them everything they would typically need in order to be able to use the system effectively? Yeah, that's right. I, the, the doctor should feel comfortable after watching the CD on, on how to use the system. There's also um, uh, on, on whamkey.com site or even on our, on our site, goldendentalsolutions.com, there, there's quite a, quite a bit of videos out there. Um, there's mm -hmm. a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, there's, there's really a lot of videos out there all over the place if you were to Google WAM key. But, um, but yeah, the, the answer to your question, the DVD is, is more than enough to, to use the system effectively. And if you want to invest a little bit more time uh, on our website watching a couple of the short videos, that would probably be helpful too. Okay. Uh, we what? did get a, a question from uh, Kurt from someone who had already purchased it and wanted to know if they could get the special. I'll, I'll send you their information and you can uh, contact them uh, individually about that. Um, 
more questions for you, Alex. Uh, are you familiar with the Klein crown remover and any comments on that system? With the what? Klein. Klein. K-L-E-I-N. No, I can, no, honestly, I've, I've never heard about this name, but uh, okay. let, me, let me check. Well, we don't have to do it now. I just was, was curious. I mean, you know, I'm reading the questions as they come in. Uh, what about using the um, system on Emacs crowns? Any uh, challenges with using it? With on Emacs, sorry? Yes. Uh, is there any challenges in using uh, the, uh, the WAN key on Emacs crowns? Uh, is it a kind of a full porcelain and this kind of uh, stuff? Right. Okay. What I said before is that, uh, remember, I said that uh, you had a 90 to 95 percent chances, right? And right. this includes all kind of crowns. So honestly, as far as you have, a, uh, uh, it might be harder, of course, to drill into these kind of materials, okay, when you are dealing with the, these uh, full porcelain crowns and it's usually much harder. Uh, so, as far as you find the, the burr to go into that crown, you'll be able to remove it, okay? Uh, it, it will be harder, but you, you can succeed. Um, uh, the, 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 the only thing, the only chance that you have is to remove it. What I mean by this is that if you, uh, if you didn't use, if you don't use the one key, you'll have to split it. You'll have to destroy it completely. Correct. Right. So, uh, if you try uh, um, the one key, you have a chance to succeed, and to uh, this will probably uh, prevent you from destroying it completely. So, you it's it's really worth trying, honestly. Okay. Oh, client. No. Is, okay, I can see that now. Let me check. I'll, I'll, well, we got a few I'll more questions just, here, so I wanted to make sure we get sure. to these questions as well. So. Um, what about, I, I would imagine, I already know the answer to this, but has anyone tried to use the WAM key to remove implants? Uh, are there any indications for something like that? Oh, you can, uh, uh, okay. Uh, I would say that you've got two different kind of, I mean, two different kind of, um, uh, um, I would say, abutments. You've got empty abutments and you've got plain abutments. So if it's a plain abutment, I would say the main issue will be to find the junction between the abutment and the crown. Okay, but as far as you can find it, and I would say if you use uh, loops, uh, it will you you should be able to find this junction. Uh, but as far as you find the junction, uh, you can remove that crown has any other crown when you have a plain abutment. And when it's empty, the problem is that you will have nothing to push on. Okay, uh, I guess you under I hope you understand. And if you, uh, the thing is that we give a trick into the, um, on the CD-ROM, uh, um, actually if you have nothing to push on, uh, so this works also when you have a lot of decay, uh, and if you really want to save the crown, what uh, we recommend is to uh, introduce into the slot, so into the, I don't know, the whole of the abutment, um, we, uh, to introduce uh, some, uh, any kind of uh, hard material such as a uh, self-cure uh, composite, wait until it's hard, drill again, and twist. Enter the key and twist. Okay. Yeah, I had another question piece. here about what happens, what do you do if the underlying tooth structure is decayed or, or soft? So I think that answers that question. A absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm still looking for your client what about, uh, what, what about if you got perfectly healthy tooth? Isn't there a risk that by using the system, um, you may end up removing some of the healthy tooth structure? Sorry, can you repeat that again? If sure. If you are, you know, you talked. We just talked about the fact that there is, uh, you know, what to do if there is a, a decayed tooth there. But if we're using the system and we've got healthy tooth there, is there not a, a risk that by using the system, the WAM key, that we may end up removing some healthy tooth structure? Okay, uh, when you um, when you drill, you probably saw on uh, several pictures. I should have uh, mentioned it. You probably saw this little uh, little slot, uh, little groove on on each abutment. It's uh, usually it's uh, the the groove is approximately the thickness of uh, the burr. Uh, so it's about a millimeter, and um, it's not, uh, how do you say, uh, for, I mean, for all the people that I met and using uh, this system, they said that it was not a big issue for them, and they were uh, 
not really uh, anxious about that. Uh, the anxious that you could have is to, uh, when you are dealing with a vital tooth, is to go into the pulp, but, for example, okay? But if you watch, if you remember uh, the procedure that we uh, mentioned before, um, we, um, I mentioned that you first have to make sure that you are at the junction between the prep and the crown, so you are really above the, uh, above the prep, and uh, to uh, avoid uh, drilling into the pulp, what I recommend is to put the burr against the, the inner side of the crown, okay, and to follow the crown down to the middle, so you, uh, you use the crown as a guide. Okay, so there is very, very, very little chance. I mean, I would not say zero chance because, but it's a very, very little chance to 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 have a problem when you follow this uh, procedure. Okay. Um, now, I, I, we only have one more question that I'm seeing here, so I would certainly encourage people if you have some burning questions that uh, you you have to have answered. Now is the time to ask, because otherwise we're going to be done in a few minutes. Um, the, but the final question I'm seeing here, which I think you had talked about in the, in the presentation, but maybe you could just go over briefly, is why do you have three different uh, WAN keys, the different sizes? What's the purpose of that? Okay. Um, I mentioned uh, uh, that um, we had to work as close as possible to uh, uh, the middle, as close as possible to the vertical axis of the crown, uh, because the, the closer we are to the vertical axis of the crown, the more efficient we are. And for that reason, uh, we always start with the smaller, uh, the, the 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 smaller instrument, the number one, and this instrument will be uh, efficient in probably uh, uh, 50 to 60 percent of the cases. But sometimes it's going to be too small uh, because you've got a um, it's going to spin inside because you've got a thick cement layer because you have some decay or uh, because you have an amalgam or just because. Uh, the window that you made the tunnel is a bit was a bit too large, uh, and so uh, if the number one is too small, then you use larger instruments. So you go to number two, and if number two is too small, you go to number three, and if number three is too small, it's because, uh, as we said before, there is nothing to push on underneath, and then uh, so you, you fill the, the window with a self-cure composite. Yeah, that makes sense, and you you'd mentioned that. Well, we're, we're out of questions, and uh, I really wanted to thank you. I, I can't believe how late you stayed up to, to join us tonight, Alex, and uh, very much It was much my pleasure. Um, it was, uh, I think, a really great presentation. I would highly encourage people to take advantage of the special. It's good until midnight tomorrow, um, and, you know, I've worked with Golden Dental Solutions for years. They stand by their products and their, their promises. If you try it out for a month and you're not happy with it, you're going to get a full refund. We don't know anyone that's actually returned it, but I, I'm sure that the, the, the policy is good. Uh, I think it's a fantastic system at a, at a great price. So I wanted to thank Alex for joining us all the way from France, and, and thank you, Kurt, for being here tonight as well. Thank you. So uh, many of you know that uh, webinars is something that we do on a regular basis, and we've got a couple coming up next week, and uh, most of you have already received invitations for those. You'll, you'll get them uh, from tonight's uh, webinar as well. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. You know, please take advantage of the special if you're thinking about the system. It's a, it's a different way of doing things, but that's what I'm all about, is finding new and improved ways of, of doing things that we've been doing for, for years and, uh, and just haven't found a, a better solution. And we do have a few of our clients who are using the WAM key. They swear by it. Uh, you, you heard the comment from the person who actually evaluated for Dental Advisor, and, and he loves it. And, I think that, uh, that speaks volumes about the product. So uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. We'll see you all for future webinars. And have a good night, everyone. Thanks again.